Evening, everyone. So nice to see you all, and congratulations for making it so many of you on time to our first class. Um, there are a lot of you, which is great. It also means I have you all on mute. Um, we have some material we want to get through. I'm going to be using the chat extensively to invite you to interact throughout this class. So this is a good time to find the chat if you don't have it already. 
and I'm going to just write a little message to you in the chat, which should create a pop up on your screen that might help you find it if you don't have it already. Here's the chat. So, um, my intention every class is going to be to start us with a chant that brings us into a different divine metaphor. And um, this chant that we just chanted, which is from Hallel, which is from Psalm 118, um, is often translated as my strength and song is God, who will be my salvation. I translated it, there's a, an interesting Hebrew grammatical quirk that I think means it is a little bit more accurately translated as my strength and divine song, may it be for me salvation. And I love the idea of starting our session together with a metaphor of divine song for the divine. So we'll come back to that at the end. I'm just going to let that sit for a moment. But I invite you to share in the chat something about why you're taking this class, what you're hoping to get out of it, if you would like to, if you would like to share that with us. And I also just want to note that some of you are logged in currently with your name, and some of you are logged in as like iPad or iPhone. And um, if that's you, I really encourage you to change your name so that we know your name. And if, and if there's two of you on a screen, maybe make sure that the name listed lists both of your names. Um, I see the question about increasing the volume, and no, I, I don't think I can. Uh, you can try to increase the volume on your own computer, but I don't have any idea of how to increase my own volume. Actually, that's not true. I can hold the phone closer to myself. Maybe that will help. Okay, I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm seeing some great comments um, that reflect both a curiosity about the possibility of spiritual experience as well as. Um, some people saying they all they really have a strong spiritual experience. Um, I appreciate that diversity of experience here. I noticed the interest in combining spiritual and intellectual pursuits. And uh, some people just wanting to be together. Wonderful. And welcome, Joanne, from Newport. Okay, so lots of people here from lots of spiritual journeys, and I'm going to invite us to dive right in to kind of the intense stuff. So if you have a writing utensil and a journal nearby, that would be a great thing to grab, and if you don't, and you're more of a working on a computer person, I encourage you to open a new window on your device that you can do some writing or note taking in. And, um, and the question I want you to answer, which I'm also gonna place in the chat is, well, it's actually a fill in the blank exactly, not a question. My historical relationship with that thing called God has been fill in the blank. If you would like to fill in the blank, 
in the chat. You're welcome to, but I'm not going to, going to demand that you go that vulnerable. And then there's a second prompt, which is, Okay. Uh, the prompt is in the chat. My historical relationship with that thing called God has been. We've got some good reconstructionists here, evolving relationships. And the second prompt is what I would like in my relationship with God is <laughs> oh, some great, great answers here. Oh, this is fun. Now I can't tell us the things people are in the chat are putting in the chat are the answers to the first or second prompt. All right, Julie, thank you for your clarity. Thank you to those who are sharing in the chat. Also, feel free to not share in the chat and do a little thinking and journaling on your own. The person who just wrote pretty non-existent, is that what it's been or what you'd like it to be? I could imagine it going either way, depending on how it's been. Okay. There's some questions about what it would mean to have a relationship. Nice. Mm. And I'm seeing some comments about desiring connection, I'm seeing at least two comments about childhood images that people are hoping to shake. And I've seen a lot of complexity, some ambivalence, some desire for more, some questions about what it would mean to have more. So great. I can't promise that we'll get you there in this class, but it is my hope that in this class, we will explore some different ways about thinking about this and um, in, in ways that are intellectually stimulating and, and perhaps at various points, different points for each of us, spiritually opening for us as well. And um, and so let's take a minute and talk about metaphor. Thank you all for your vulnerability in the chat. Um, and before we do this, I want to say 
some a word about the book. Most of you have gotten the book. I think a few of you haven't yet picked up the book from TBI. There are not going to be reading assignments in this class. Um, we're going to work through the book together, so to speak. And so after each class, you're welcome to review the chapters that I'm referring to. Um, but there's no need to like do reading in advance of class. Um, you may want to have the book on hand to refer to various um, concepts while we are discussing in class. So uh, as you may know, if you have already opened the book and started reading, the first, the introduction and the first two chapters are just about the idea of metaphor and the ways that metaphors influence our lives. And frankly, when I started reading this book, I found these two chapters to be entirely mind blowing on their own before they even started talking about God. So the point that Rabbi Spitzer makes in the first two chapters, and she's really citing from the work of two other uh, people a lot, um, Geary and Lakoff, is that the metaphors we use, particularly the metaphors that we totally take for granted and don't pay attention to, actually influence the way we are able to think about the world, the patterns that we have of thinking about the world. So for example, she talks about how one of the totally internalized metaphors that people, at least in American culture speaking English, use all the time is anger is a hot liquid in a container. So we speak of people getting steamed up or boiling over or anger spilling over. And, um, and so what does it do to us when that is a metaphor that we consistently have to think about the experience of anger? We see anger as something that needs to be contained, that could be dangerous and hurt people if it isn't contained, just like boiling water is dangerous and hurt, it hurts people if it's not contained. Um, or we see anger as a weapon that could be shot at people because just like, you know, boiling oil is, is, is used as a weapon. So the implicit question here is if you could see anger as something else, if we could find other compelling metaphors for anger, like, for example, I just made this one up. This isn't from the book. Like, what if anger is an energetic horse that you need to ride till it calms down? Like, that's not, an, that's not a metaphor we typically use for anger, but it could be. And that would be a very different experience of how we might relate to anger. Or anger is a river that flows through us. Also would be a different experience. Um, so oh, thank you for this comment in the chat about Dance of Anger being a title of another book. Um, so I'm going to put a quote by Geary and Lakoff in the chat. They're actually talking about a different metaphor, time is money. And the way that that metaphor and the ways that we have and that we have internalized that right we spend time we save time we waste time our time is valuable our time is squandered um the way that that metaphor has actually been necessary to create capitalist societies um so i'm gonna put this quote in the chat it might take me a few chunks of text and then i'm gonna invite you to spend five minutes in breakout rooms, just in small groups of two or three people, reading the quote, which you should still be able to see in the chat once you go into your breakout room, um, and discussing, like, is this a new idea? Is this totally known to you? And um, and what other metaphors can you think of? And and maybe it, and it's it's a hard exercise. I will admit, it is a hard exercise to think of. Um, how we how we have metaphors that define the way we see the world. Give me a moment. I'm going to get this whole quote in the chat. Actually, that's not what I'm going to do. That's silly. I'm going to create a link to the document with the quote that I will share with you in the chat, and you can open it yourself. A moment. Okay. 
So if you click on this link, you should be able to open a two paragraph quote. This quote is not in the book, not in its entirety. So, but it is in a, in a live link that I just placed in the chat. You should be able to click on it and open the quote. And, um, and now I'm going to place you into breakout rooms. If you would like to not be in a breakout room and not have to discuss with anybody, you may leave this meeting for f and set a timer for five minutes and read the quote yourself and then come back into the meeting. But if you don't leave the meeting in the next 15 seconds, I'm going to ask you to join the breakout room and talk to the people that you are assigned to be with there. Um, okay, here we go. Okay, you should all have an invitation showing up to join a breakout room. All right, welcome back everyone. I just wanna acknowledge that many of you were just interrupted in the middle of a fascinating conversation. Feel free to finish the, the thought with messages to each other in the chat or thank your partners in the chat. Um, and I'd love to just see, I mean, this is the first of eight classes and since we're too big a group to really have intimate conversation out loud in our whole group, I'd love to see like a thumbs up or thumbs down. How is it to have like brief discussions in breakout rooms? All right, all right, we'll do that one more time this evening, I hope. And in the meantime, if there's an insight that you had that came up in, the, in your breakout room, um, go ahead and share it in the chat if you would like to. I see that a few people can't access the link. So when that's the case, I'm just going to ask, like, I hope someone in the breakout room can and can read out loud to the rest of the people in your group. Um, yeah, we can experiment with different sizes. All right, let's get to content, though. This idea of metaphor as defining the actual way we experience and are even capable of thinking about the world. How does that how did that strike you? What did that bring up for you? Did it blow your mind? Were you like, obviously, um, did you think of other metaphors that define our experience? And if so, please share them with us in the chat. War on poverty, nice. Question the assumption behind the metaphor. Mm -hmm. Metaphors can be changed. Great. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Uh, what's his name? Jonathan Haidt has a whole book on how Democrats don't have effective metaphors. Two birds with one seed. Fabulous. Okay. Love what's coming in the chat. Feel free to keep it coming. I am going to move on. So let's talk about God metaphors. What metaphors 
have you internalized about the word God? Feel free to journal this. Feel free to put in the chat. I'm going to clarify what I mean by that question. Um, what comes up for you when you hear the word God? What's the visceral, internal, or intellectual response? And if there's an intense visceral, internal, intellectual, or intellectual response, what's the metaphor that's behind that visceral, internal, intellectual response? Put the question in the chat as well. Oh. If you've already put in the chat, make sure you're scrolling and reading what other people are saying, because it's awesome. So we have everything ranging from God is a control freak up in the sky who's going to punish, you know, who has all the power to punish us. God is something inside that is a source of love and compassion. God is a friend. God is the animation of nature. Um, so Here's the thing. Here's the great thing about being a Reconstructionist Jew. None of those are wrong, and none of those are the right answer. And as I said on, on Rosh Hashanah, I actually think the secret of the Jewish concept of idolatry is that idolatry is whenever we point to any of those images of God and say, that's it, and that's the only definition. So, the this is a moment where it might be helpful to get out the book if you have it. And let's look at the list of functions. Let's turn to page 34 and 35. And let's look at the list of functions. These are just the functions that Toba Spitzer in writing the book brainstormed that we need the sacred to fill in our lives. I don't think I don't think it is exhaustive, um, but I think it is a good start. And I'm gonna invite you again to get into breakout rooms and discuss together on pages 34 and 35. How are the metaphors you have for God effective 
or not in helping you meet the spiritual functions that that humans need. And also, if you want, you can discuss, are there more spiritual functions that you are seeking a divine image to, to help meet than what is on 34 and 35? So per the suggestion of many of you, I'm going to give you 10 minutes to discuss this. I'm also going to give you another quote to look at. So there's a lot coming in the chat right now. Keep an eye on it. This is a link to a document with two quotes about the way metaphor works in thinking about God and a discussion question. Nina, I saw your point about needing to have a discussion question. And I'm going to add the discussion question of on pages 34 and 35. Um, which of your, which, which of these needs that are listed, these functions that are listed on these pages are already met by your experience and, um, and, and how, do, how does your metaphoric experience of God limit or get in the way of being able to experience all these functions? So I'm going to put that question in the chat as well, and then I'm going to break you into breakout rooms. Are these questions clear? If they are not, feel free to use the raise hand function and I will invite you to unmute and ask a question. Okay. I'm gonna send you into breakout rooms again. Just give me a moment. I'm going to create these and you'll have 10 minutes. You should all have an invitation to join a breakout room.